The most natural way to make vitamin D is to expose our skin to the sun, particularly around midday when the intensity of the sun's rays will be at their maximum, and particularly in the summertime. Well, the only way vitamin D3 is made for anybody is through sunshine exposure. It's because uh, cholesterol and its precursors are part of the natural biology of human beings, and that's how we make it, because we're a species designed to uh, exist in the tropics and get lots of sunshine. You can know that you're making vitamin D when you're outdoors uh, if your shadow is shorter than you are. The second step is that you need to have the minimum amount of clothing on it. More important than anything else, uh, with respect to what you can manipulate, it's to wear fewer clothes. And you should have at least 40% of your body exposed to the sun. You know, I don't think there's any official statement about that, but I guess there's two answers. If, you ta if your skin tans and you can see it getting darker over the period of days you're in the sun, then you've made vitamin D. Um, the other one is that if you're out in full sunshine of the day and your shadow is shorter than your height, then that's a good indication that the UV index is three or higher and you're starting to make more vitamin D. The shorter your shadow is, the greater the amount of ultraviolet light there is in, in, in hitting your skin. So that's how. Sunbeds can be used as an alternative to going outdoors, particularly in winter when you wouldn't want to expose much skin anyway. And they do make vitamin D in your skin, and they can do it perfectly well. Um, Sunbeds, sun of course, can be used to make vitamin D. It's been one of the ways that we've measured the amount of vitamin D that skin has the capacity to make. You know, when you answer the question, gee, how much uh, vitamin D does the sun give you? Nobody's actually gone out and laid in the sun. What those experiments covered were suntan parlor data. So what we claim about sunshine and how much it makes is actually suntan parlor results. So of course they do it. Well, wintertime, whether in the northern or southern hemisphere winter, uh, will be a time when you don't naturally make very much vitamin D. Uh, if you're far enough south in the northern hemisphere or far enough north in the southern hemisphere, you can make some, particularly around midday. And that's what the Australians are referring to when they speak about a D break. Uh, because at that time, you can make some vitamin D, but of course, you have to be outdoors in order to do that. And so what I recommend is that I think that that, that break should actually be throughout the year and that you just have to get some sensible sun exposure. And using this app, dminer.info, even in Australia, will give you a good insight for how long to stay outside and then to go back into the shade or use sun protection, take advantage of the beneficial effect of the sunlight, prevent the damaging effects from excessive exposure to sunlight. Australia is now promoting a, a dee break in winter, and I think it's a great idea. To me, it's a breath of fresh air, and I, I wouldn't do it just in the winter. I think they should do it. You know, every time but midsummer, perhaps. Uh, happily, I don't feel that I have to make a choice between the various ways of getting my vitamin D. Uh, I get it from sun, exposing my skin. I get it from uh, capsules or tablets. And I get it from the meat I eat. And I expect to get it from all three sources. My goal is not where I get it from, but what level I achieve in my blood. But from my perspective, I think we should take advantage of Mother Nature and the fact that she's given us a gift, which is to be able to make vitamin D in your skin, again, using sensible sun exposure. And I, what I do, and I tell my patients, is what I personally do is I get some sensible sun exposure, right? I love to garden, and I love to cycle, and I like to play tennis. Sunscreen on my face, down on my arms and legs, never get a sunburn. Right? Use the app if you need to, right? And also I take a supplement. And I take personally a supplement of 3,000 units of vitamin D a day. I drink three glasses of skim milk and get some other sources of vitamin D. So I'm getting about 4,000 units a day. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you only have a few months where you get enough sunshine. Um, so I like making it by going outside. 
Um, reality is, though, I quite regularly take uh, a decent dose of vitamin D. I probably average 4,000 units per day. Uh, as a physician, I would recommend a sunbed for my patients who have malabsorption syndromes. That is, their intestines are not working correctly and they cannot absorb vitamin D very efficiently from food or supplement if it's taken by mouth. So the question, of course, is can you use a sunbed to make vitamin D? And so tanners actually have robust levels of 25 hydroxy vitamin D, a measure of your vitamin D status. Because we did a study here in Boston, I was just curious. And so when we looked at blood levels of 25 hydroxy D in tanners that would use a tanning bed at least once a week in wintertime, the levels on average were 48 nanograms per ml, which is really robust, right? That we matched for both sex and age, men and women who did not use a tanning bed. Their blood levels were 18 nanograms per ml. They were all vitamin D deficient. So yeah, tanning beds can make vitamin D in your skin. Make sure that it puts out UVB light. And like I said, if you want to get your vitamin D from a sun tanning bed, sun protection on your face, half the time recommended for tanning, right? Minimize any uh, potential for getting sunburn, minimize skin damage, and yet take advantage by making vitamin D. The good news is that th there are many benefits to sunlight besides making vitamin D. You know, vitamin D is made by a narrow band of the sun's radiation. Uh, and there are many other wavelength regions in that visible light that produce all kinds of good effects. Uh, it's good for the spirits. It raises our... Um, our, our uh, our happiness, uh, uh, it decreases our blood pressure. Uh, uh, it promotes lots of things that are healthy for us. Uh, vitamin D just happens to be the one that we're most concerned about now because vitamin D deficiency is so common uh, in the um, populations of the industrialized nations. So then the obvious question is, does sunlight provide you with any other benefits? And it turns out that the answer is yes. We and others have shown that when you're exposed to sunlight, one of the reasons you feel better is that you make beta endorphin in your skin. And as you're aware, beta endorphin is what we call an endogenous opiate. It's what gives runners their high. So we think that that's one of the reasons why people feel better when they're exposed to sunlight. We also know that nitric oxide is produced in the skin during sun exposure. This probably explains why people feel more relaxed because nitric oxide is a major regulator of blood pressure and will decrease blood pressure. And there's probably a lot of other uh, biological processes that are going on in your skin when you're exposed to sunlight that yet need to be really investigated. One of them potentially is that not only when you're exposed to sunlight do you make vitamin D in your skin, but you make at least a, about five to six additional vitamin D-like photoproducts, and we think that they have unique properties in the skin that may actually help reduce risk of skin cancer and may have improvement in overall skin health. So we think that exposure to sensible sun light, right, using that app, dminder.info, is a really wise thing to do. It will help maintain good health, help provide you with your vitamin D, and make you feel better. Well, there's no doubt that um, ultraviolet light or sunshine produces benefits other than vitamin D, but it's kind of a two-edged sword. The reason is, let's say your endorphins go up and you feel better when you're in the sun. Why would that be? You know, the things that make us feel certain ways generally have to do with reproduction. So why would ultraviolet light affect reproduction in a way that makes you feel good? Hmm. Well, it's because if you have rickets or you're a girl, your pelvis is not shaped properly to deliver a child naturally. So there's effectively a dri driver toward natural selection for people that like to be out in the sun. I've been surprised and a little bit puzzled over the years to see the emphasis that has been placed on skin protection 
which can be accomplished by covering up the skin or by using sunscreen. Now it's virtually impossible for mothers to take their babies out and get some sunshine uh, if they're not completely swaddled from head to foot or covered by sunscreen. I think that's a mistake. Uh, sunscreens have been used by the human race for probably no more than 30 years. And early in that period, not very much. And they weren't very strong. Um, our grandmothers, our, our mothers, at least in my case, uh, hung their clothes out on the clothesline in the backyard and got sunlight when they did that. And our fathers walked to the bus stop to, or the streetcar stop in order to get on public transportation to go to work and then walked several blocks from the streetcar stop to wherever they went. We were outdoors a great deal more than is the case today. And yet we didn't die of skin cancer or melanoma or any of the other horrible things that people are being scared with. Um, I think it's important to understand all that although sunscreen can be a very helpful thing for us, uh, the sunscreen manufacturers have a vested interest in scaring us to death so that we'll use more of their product. And that, I think, needs to be resisted. I think that's a mistake. If you have a chance to be outdoors, I think you ought to be outdoors when you can.